Hello everybody, it is me, A.A. Ran, and welcome back to another playthrough that I'm going to be doing on the side of Star Fox Assault. This is going to be my playthrough on Spongebob Revenge of the Alpha Mention Antagonist. I'm not spoiling it yet, even if the title on the, under the video is telling you already what it is. And I respect the people that don't want to be spoiled yet. Big Sony Directive. Wow. Interactive. That's what video games are. Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Yep, there you go. There you go. Now I can say it. it's Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. This game. <coughs> oh boy, this game. I have an interesting history with this game, that's for sure. And I can't wait to be talking about it, actually. Um. Wow, he stopped setting his charts. It's like Wario doesn't worry. Oh, wow. See, load game. I don't have a file saved yet. Extras options. I guess, yeah, this is the new game. It's right over the... Burning Grill. Oh, yeah. Just look at this guy. He, he looks... He looks like he belongs in an N64. When you look at it compared to maybe his design in Revenge of... Not Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. That's the game I'm playing right now. Um, Battle for Bikini Bottom or the movie game or Creature from the Krusty Krab. Really, any game after this one? It really does go to show just how much better they could have gotten with look at that idle animation. How much better they could have gotten with this model, but um, there's a lot of things I can go into um, the talking about as far as this game is concerned. Let's just get it started, and I'll go ahead and talk about it as we go. Hope I'm not mumbling too much. I don't have a problem with that. The feeling that this will be like any other day. I wonder why. It's a video game. I am. You're no longer the one in control. It's like, yeah, a match made in heaven. That's the perfect time to say that line. All right, Gary. Good morning, Gary. Wait till I tell you about my crazy dream where the Krusty Krab was closed and. Oh, you don't say. You had a dream too? That something really bad is gonna happen? Uh-huh. Whoa, that really is bad. Well, I know just the thing to cheer you up. I'll go fetch your favorite fetching stick. Alright, um... So, for a little Gare Bear, let's see if we can find that fetching stick. Um, where is it? That was the bathroom! Um, interesting note, actually. You know how this actually is the bedroom for this game? That actually is like where SpongeBob's closet is in Battle for Bikini Bottom, and of course, this is where the exit is. Yes, I know, game. I gotta find the fetching stick. And here is actually where SpongeBob's bedroom would be. The bathroom actually would be in here. But I guess this is also where the kitchen was. Do you think your little friend Gary would like to play some fetch? Uh, yeah, I guess. Very well. Then move next to his fetching stick and press the action button to pick it up. Then you can carry the stick to Gary and delight him. Sweet, but um, I wonder if this. No, I can't. There's no way I can go over here. Because normally this is where the bathroom would be located. Oh well. You did oh, they walked me out. You're gonna leave for work without a quick game of fetch, did you, Gary? Now come on, boy! Go long! Look at this animation. Oh, don't be such a soggy sport, Gary. What harm can there be in just a little peek? <laughs> I love this game. Just what I always wanted—a muddy little bottle. 
Just think of all the fun we can have cleaning it. Here we go. Like a genie. Jerk, just throwing his own pet under the bus because he was afraid of being captured himself. Like, wow. And how do I... Okay, R to crouch, okay. But yeah, if you notice in the cutscene, the model's eyes actually get really big for some reason. Like, not even in the way it would be cute, it's just really, really big. The pupils become enlarged. One of the TV hasn't even... <coughs> Yeah, just karate chop the TV, why the heck not? Uh, let's get out of here. But yeah, this actually was a game that I actually owned as a kid. And I never beat it. I can't necessarily say this is a blind playthrough, however, and I'll go into detail why that is later. Well, <clears throat> yeah, don't worry, I'll go into detail, you will be informed in time. But yeah, this game, it's... Honestly, a pretty... It's, it's an interesting um, design game, that's for sure. It does have like all the voice actors that you come to know and love from the actual show. It's got... It's got some decent music. It's got a lot of... Levels that resemble actual areas from the show, also. I really need to reach that other ledge, but I don't think I have it in me. Don't be discouraged. You can do it. Press jump, then you can glide a bit farther if you press jump again before you land. Ah, oh, so. Alright. I... Okay, I get it. That is no ordinary letter tile, it is a clue. Gather all the letters that spell your name, and you will have enough clues to find a hidden treasure. Who's this narrator anyway? He doesn't sound like um, whoever really did narrate in the show. <clears throat> it's kind of funny actually. It's like you just have to wait until the you know spark up in this imaginary voice. I imagine this in his head. Have their little discussion, I guess, about whatever's at hand, and then that's how you get to know better what you're supposed to be doing. Gee, Patrick, is everything okay? Not okay. Not okay. Something fell on my roof and now my TV doesn't work. I can't get up there to fix the thing, and I'm missing all my favorite shows. No. Oh. oh, that's too bad. I wish there was something I could do to help. Ah, but there is. You can get up there if you try. <laughs> Hold the duck button. I know this already. I already do this in my house. What are you waiting for, SpongeBob? <coughs> I'm missing my shows. A real buddy would get up there and make my life complete again. Ah, uh, oh, barnacles. 
Y yeah, screw you, Patrick, but whatever. Alrighty, looks like I found your problem. There's a big thingy on your thingy, and it's all bent out of shape. But it looks too big for me to move. You don't need to move it when you can simply break it apart. Face the container and press the action button to karate chop it. All right. SpongeBob. Save your gratitude, my jolly pink friend. It's all in a day's work for a sponge such as I. But uh, maybe you can help me with a problem that I'm having. You see, it all started this morning when Gary and I were playing fetch. Thought, second thought, who wants to stay at home and watch TV on a day like this? I'm going downtown to see the new construction site. Maybe you could meet me there and we'll play Mermaid Man and Vertical Boy. Last one, there's a nematode. Ugh, nematode. You should really. Look actually into that. Nematodes are quite a parasite and you look into the world of ants. Um, but yeah, the graphics in this game also leave a lot to be desired, and I understand that this was also pretty early on in the GameCube's lifespan, but this is the kind of graphics I would expect to see in the Nintendo 64. Just look at SpongeBob, it looks quite a bit odd. Like, not necessarily inaccurate, but it definitely looks dated, especially nowadays in 2017. I'm not really a person that really cares too much for graphics, but, like, uh, this looks, this looks bad even for the time this came out. I'm just saying. But you had games like Ocarina of Time, and the advances, the advancements that they made, and then you look at this. Like, this also came a whole console generation after. But, like I said before, I honestly don't care too much for graphics. If the gameplay is good, I can look past bad graphics, or, I suppose, mediocre. But, yeah, you know what I grew up with. When you grow up with Nintendo, that often tends to be priority to you. It's how fun a game could get. Take a long ride on the bus. Just think of all the amazing places outside Bikini Bottom and all the fun things I could do. Your wish can easily come true. All you need is the right ticket for this bus stop. This narrator. Jump onto the bench and the bus will stop for you. Like, there's this game sure has a lot of pauses in it, too. Like, every now and then, Spongebob just stops dead in his tracks for the narrator to talk to him, and it's like, oh, uh, I guess I'm just gonna stop doing what I was doing and just let the guy narrate for me. Um, just saying, by the way, about this playthrough, I am not necessarily aiming for anything in particular. I'm just kind of, you know, doing this in downtime. Because I don't really upload on Sundays, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to have my YouTube channel be active all the time if I can, so... I'm thinking that every Sunday, I'm just going to upload an, ep um, an episode and be playing a, maybe a Spongebob game. Also, I noticed you can't really cancel the hover, it just ends on its own, so that's interesting. Maybe you can cancel it early? No, you can press... Okay, press X to do a ground pound, or a hip-hop drop, as I like to call it. And there's a clam. I think this is what I actually just... Yeah, okay. Alright, whatever. I understand also, by the way, what you're supposed to do to beat the game, so... I don't know, maybe I'll also try going for all the the blooms, but I'm honestly not going to lose any sleep over not 100% of this game, because... From what I've also heard, this game isn't even reliable when it comes to telling you what you need to get in order to 100% it. I'll try my hardest, but I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to do it. And there's, yeah, there's kind for the blooms, for jellyfish, and for getting sand dollars. This game made me think that sand dollars were just currency you use underwater, but sand dollars aren't that. They actually are an animal that you find underwater or at the beach. Curse this game for making me stupider. And curse my school for not clarifying it and making me feel super for wasting my time in a medium where honestly I wasn't getting much help. Do not be so hasty. For these clams are just a part of this cycle of life. When a clam shuts its mouth, you can jump onto it and launch very high. Sometimes, valuable things are hidden in high places. Okay, creepy narrator that I don't know the name of. I can't do anything about this jellyfish. I need a jellyfishing net. How do I get a jellyfishing net is the question. Like, I know about all the upgrades, I know about all the levels, I know about... A lot of the, you know, 
wrinkles in this game that could have been ironed out, but weren't. Because, I don't know. If this was made by Heavy Iron, this game would have probably been a lot more polished. They make some really good games, with Splash Up, no less. I can tell that they really like the show, and I can't wait to gush over them if I ever play a game like the movie game or Battle for Bikini Bottom, because... Uh, we got some bullies here. I can chop in the air, that's... that's new. Alright. It's got a really odd range. Alright, three hits and that's it. I like to space myself carefully, I don't like to get too close and risk getting hurt. Um, let's see, what about this? Nothing? Okay, makes a sound effect, but nothing else aside from that. Uh, jump up here, and another jellyfish! They have to get these letters that spell at Spongebob's name, and then it opens a level where you have to solve a puzzle, which they already tell you the solution of. Yeah, this game is also really easy. And after that, it's like... Yeah. That unlocks a treasure, one of the Flying Dutchman's treasures, and you need to collect seven of them. Why seven? Because, I don't know, seven's a really magical number in video games. And that allows you to get to the final area. I don't think there's anything else I can do here, though, so I'm just going to go outside. Editing on, this, on these videos are also going to be pretty minimal compared to my other videos, because... I don't know, this is kind of just something I want to do on the side. Not much else to it, really. I guess in the meantime, I'll just have to focus on trying to find the, um, find the changing tent, because I don't know how to spawn it. But don't worry, I'll be sure to... You know, edit out anything that's just redundant, because I don't understand backtracking is boring. Oh, Mr. Krabs warned me about playing hooky, but they look so fun! Maybe just one quick ride while no one's looking. Ah, uh, you little troublemaker. Those hooks can be very dangerous, but I promise not to tell if you use your fishing net to hang from them. That's the only safe way to do it. Yeah, you actually take damage if you... Try touching those hooks yourself, which is kind of interesting. Oh. That was a target? I thought that was a bounce pad for some reason. Alright, sweet. Must be to swing the net. Alright, and look at that. Looks like he doesn't have eyes behind his glasses. It reminds me of Squirrel Boy. I'm sorry for bringing that up. Looks like he also has a fairly decent range, too. Yeah, look at that, I didn't even... That should not even have hit him, but it did. I have to ask, though, what is this back pocket that SpongeBob has in his... Um... You know... On the back of his pants. Yeah, that's how I see... I also I remember some of the controls here from watching Pi Got Rules play this game. You have to press the L button to sneak up on Jellyfish. Like the green ones, because otherwise they'll go up too high for you to actually reach them. Like, I'm fairly familiar with this game, and trust me, there's not a lot that's actually going to be blindsiding me either, because I've already seen it recently. And, oh. And, well, oh, the B button. I thought it was the Y button for some reason. I don't know why. I guess I forgot that the bubble spin. But yeah, this music is at least fun to listen to on repeat, but... Another problem that I tend to have with games like this, actually, is that... The music doesn't loop very well, and I mean, just, just wait. It'll make itself perfectly clear in just a few seconds. Yeah, you hear that? It just got, it leaped over itself for a second and then just start over. Now, how do I hang in from this hook? Alright, press B when you get up close to it. Okay, that's, that's simple enough. And, yeah, this is kind of wonky. Maybe I'm just being a little too careful, that's a problem I have, I like to take my time, and when I take my time, sometimes I end up missing my chance. It's something I have to overcome, but, you know what? I can't even say you know what, because they say that if you are trying to, if you try to hit a, hit a golf ball too hard, then at least you try, but you're not trying at all if you, if you undershoot. So maybe I should try to be more aggressive, I don't know. That actually might be some good advice for you guys if you are having the same problem that I have, but I still gotta, you know, listen to what I'm actually saying, because otherwise it's like I'm a hypocrite if I don't actually apply what I'm talking about. 
I'm probably just citing a lot of nonsense now, but whatever, whatever. I'm gonna see if I can get some of these doubloon coins as well. I hope you guys don't find this too monotonous or boring. But, eh, it's. That's what happens when you're just watching someone play a video game, right? It's always more fun to play games than just to watch them, unless it's a game that you generally have a lot of trouble with, and even then, you'd probably just be wishing that you could beat the game. I don't know. That's sometimes how I feel. Like, I would love to actually be as good as the people that I'd be watching, but. I'm not. Oh well. But, you know, with practice comes perfection, even if perfection is impossible to obtain, unfortunately. Uh, let's see if we can get some more of these doubloons, actually. I know doubloons are actually required to beat the game, not necessarily in quantity, it's just in, for that specific level. Even then, this game doesn't really, is not accurate when it comes to how many doubloons you actually need in order to have all of them in a, in a certain level. <clears throat> Uh, let's go ahead and catch some more jellyfish. What's my to-do list? Uh, oh, why is the Y button back, not the B button? Catch eight jellyfish in Bikini Bottom. And I have... Um, five. Well, shoot. So, if I catch enough jellyfish, then that's going to trigger the next part of the game. Okay. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and just do some doubloon hunting for the time being, and if I can't really think of anything to talk about, I'll just edit this out, because I understand this is otherwise gonna be just really... nothing. I don't know. And actually, I don't think I can find any of the doubloons that I want to bother hunting for. Can I go this way? What's the... what? But the Krusty Krab was that way, what? Yeah, that's another thing, when you play the game... like, well not even, you know what? No, forget that, because there's two ways to the Krusty Krab. That's... that's odd. I guess the blue one tried to run away from you. Okay. There's another changing tent. I guess that must have been activated as soon as we hit the first switch. I remember trying to also activate the, the Reef Blower and Mermaid Man on, out on costumes, but I didn't actually have them unlocked, and I didn't understand that either. You wanna know what I actually, like, got scared of this? Oh yeah! Um... <clears throat> I think I mentioned this in my head at least, but I don't remember if I actually mentioned this on camera. The reason I never actually beat this game is because I was scared of it. Yeah, I was scared of this game when I first played it as a kid. Like, some of the things that people have been scared of I can definitely understand. Some of the, some of the things I get scared of is like... Why? Resident Row. Is that, like... That is weird. But yeah, like, the, you know the thing you you hear, the jingle at least, when you, you know, have a... When, when you run out of health? That's what scared me. And it happened when I was getting pushed into a bottomless pit. Yeah, it's... that's weird. There we go. Spinning in circles! And this part is also pretty weird, actually. After the looting chains, you're inside SpongeBob's head, I can only assume. And, yeah, you basically just ground pound all of these in order that you've seen them already spin, and what's even easier is that you can even see, you know, how the framework is because of the things on the side. So, you would have to fail really hard to not get this one. Bubble sand and that funky dance. Look at this. Look at those eyes too. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Trust me, this this game is gonna be a lot like this. And yeah, after you actually get those letters and you put them in the right order, you have you enter the level you are in again. But you also have this divining rod and. You use like a pogo stick. I don't really I don't know how this works. You know what? Mate, wait, wait. Vibration. Right, right. I get it. Like the treasure is also above ground, so it's not gonna be very easy to miss either in that sense. You kinda just have to 
you know, trust the rumble and find this chest. Find all the chests to defeat the flying Dutchman. Or the Dutchman. A sock. A dining sock. My sentiments exactly. My sentiments exactly. <laughs> 